The next one is more of a general industrial, and this is a one a subject that we haven't talked up about. And I'll I'm going to use in future webinars some more of these helical parts. Um, so this was scanned, I believe, with an arm, which I don't have an arm up here. Uh, I need to drop one in there. Um, but you see here with this helical part, these are fun ones to to get into. Um, and we'll just talk about how to create those uh, helix inside of Design X. Um, so that's a really neat um, application because we're able to use Design X when we cut a cross section to measure all the information about the helix or thread, um, depending on how you look at what the purpose of it is, and then model it. So I have this example. There's lots of really good helix examples that we use over the years. Um, so we'll just toggle over to Design X. So there is the piece. And this one is, once you understand the helix, it's super simple. The rest of the part is one giant revolve. Um, but the helix portion is awesome. And there's a bunch of varieties of helix. Like this is a very consistent auger thread type thing. So this one is a very simple one. And I'll find some more in our database of examples um, to, to go over in the future that or add a, some extra wrinkles. But I wanted to start with this one because this is a question that we get often is how to create these. So first of all, you go ahead and create your vector down the middle, which you should already have, usually from aligning when you're aligning this to the world um, to create that. So you see here that I have that vector. Um, so you create that. And then the next step is to go ahead with this with this type of helix to go ahead and model your tooth or your object that you're going to sweep. Now, when you're in there, we'll just go inside of this sketch. It's important with this type of application, I'm not just modeling the tooth when I come in here. I also wanna make measurements um, to understand what the diameter is going to be. So 10, I'm going to measure and say, I, yes, I'm going to dimension out my sketch and make it um, all the dimensions it needs to be. But what I also do it when I'm in here is I'll also create reference geometry to measure the pitch and get all the details of this. So that 10 millimeters from here to the center is important to know, which that'll be gathered from it. Um, but then it's also important to kind of, uh, so I'll also do this just to show a little bit of how you'll go, go about doing it. But sometimes I'll do it this way where I will come in here, I'll draw this out. And just for the sake of speed, I will do this. And then I'll make a measure to know, you know, what the, that number is and just kind of measure out so I know everything about this helix. I'm basically identifying all the information that I need for the helix um, while I'm in the sketch, right? And then I can just create, I can make these construction entities if I need to. Um, so that way uh, they don't, they won't, need to be revolved or swept as I as I do it. But the, the idea here that I'm trying to explain and I'm being long-winded about is I measure out, and you can even do this in a separate sketch. You draw your profile of what you're gonna sweep, but you also measure out the, the values that you're gonna use for your helix. And the reason why I say that is because we come over here to the helix, roll forward, show the mesh, when we create the helix, when we create the helix, most people are like, well, how do you know the values? Well, I measured them inside of the sketch. Now, I'm going to do an edit of the helix. 
And you see here, what you do is you select the axis, you select the start point, which is usually the sketch. You use the sketch right there. And you select that point. Now you need to dictate the radius it'll grab from that point. It grabs that automatically, you see there. Now the pitch is what I needed to type in. So I measure the pitch. And you see, I made a mistake there. I measured to the next one. This is a, a two-start helix. So there, there's another thing to keep in mind here. When people um, are working with helix and threads and, and augers and all that, you have to know how many starts there are, how many fins. So there's actually two here. You have to pay attention to that. You see, and I wasn't at the beginning, so there's two. So that means when I make that measurement of 15 millimeters, I'm measuring from this one to that one to know what the pitch of each individual start is, right? Um, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, so what I can do is I can dictate how many revolutions and I can double click on these and edit them. So if I, if I come in here and I'll just mess it up just to, so you see now it started there and we said to go backwards and forwards, uh, how many revolutions um, with a new pitch that's 18. And I'm just going to cancel out of it when we're done and let it go back. But you see here, that's the, the, the thing that I'm trying to measure when I'm inside of that sketch is the pitch from here to here to understand how many, whether it's clockwise, counterclockwise. But the, the little gotcha of the way we do it in here is these values, you double click on them in here. You double click on them in there and you can change them and update this. So that's important to note here. Um, when you create your helix and then I just cancel out and let it go back to where it was before. So after we have our helix, we've created our helix, we have our profile, we can go ahead and sweep. And there we go, we have our sweep. And I'll turn this on and off and you'll notice this is typical for so an auger where you have to go ahead and trim that down. So we'll go ahead and what we did is we created a sketch here where they created this profile to then re do a revolve cut and slice that down. It was about that center axis that it was a revolve cut on both sides here actually. And then now they went ahead and did an extrude cut down from this direction. We'll show the sketch so we can see it there. From this direction and cut down to trim it in that direction too. You see, we did it on this side separately this time. And then we did a circular pattern to make a second one. So we'll turn that off so you can see. So we just did a circular pattern of two. If you just edit this, you'll see instance two, about 360, boom, we are done. Now, from here, just the finishing work where we go ahead and create that center axis and then do your cleanup where you're filleting, chamfering the top, and then fillets of all the edges on the interior there for your auger. So really neat diff, uh, application there. And again, I, I have more examples for these that we'll use in future webinars. I'm just trying to mix up the, the, the applications a little bit to keep it, keep it uh, revolving and not get stuck on one type of application for too long.